Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am broadcasting this stream to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe, back after a week of holidays. Hope everybody has been doing exceptionally well. Hi, Amarwadi. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Claudia. Good to see members joining in as well. Hi, Hung. Hi, Preeti and Bagzad. Good to see so many students. All right, everyone. Uh, still the same as usual. Our materials, these lessons, and lots of professional materials for your high IELTS band scores come from our websites at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. That's academicenglishhelp.com. And for the general module, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's, of course, generaliltshelp.com with fully interactive courses for your phone, tablet, and PC. Hi, Tina. Hi, everyone. Um, students, our websites, they look like this. Just real quick, this is our academic website if you're looking for it. Uh, it's the original, it's aehelp.com. Click that red button to join, get your practice exams, interactive course and video lessons over 100 hours for general, same idea, just with the green background. Make sure you know which version of the exam you need to do. General is usually for immigration, for moving to another country uh, and um, or visas. And academic is for student visas, going to university, and often for work. All right, everyone. Uh, we've brought back our popular discount code uh, on those websites. You can use the code LIVE20 to get a 20% discount. And if you have questions about the exam, about our products, about life and the meaning of what it is to be, no, just kidding. Um, but if you ha do have questions about the exam or about our products, send me an email, my name, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Thank you, Roshni. I missed all of our students as well while enjoying Italy. All right, uh, here is the schedule, still the same as before. So uh, classes go from Wednesday to Saturday, uh, 13.30 to 14.30 and 15 to 16 o'clock, according to Central European Summertime. If you're not sure what that is in your time zone, just simply put CET or CEST into Google and it will tell you the time zone difference. Hi, Parminder. Missed you too. Ah, Silin Wang, you got an overall band seven. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, double thumbs up. Congratulations, uh, Silin. We've had a few very successful students uh, in the past week, so I'm so, so excited and happy for all of you for getting those great band scores. Silin, again, congratulations. Band seven, that means a good user of English, above fluent, so very good. Okay, all right. All right, students, so uh, today uh, we are looking at speaking part one. We will talk a little bit about strategy and technique, and we will, of course, get into uh, some speaking practice and exercise. Um, satisfying times. Awesome. I'm glad that uh, that you're getting a lot of the classes as well. Students, it is a speaking class, so don't just listen to me, but actually speak. So make sure to repeat what I say. Copy questions, not just answers. Often students focus too much on enough on questions, it's very important that you focus on practicing questions uh, for speaking as well. So when you have a speaking partner, uh, switch roles, okay? Uh, first turn, one of you asks the questions, the other gives answers, then switch. The other asks the questions and uh, the responses come from the other person. So keep switching, okay? 
All right. Uh, tomorrow we will have a members chat class, task two. Uh, then we will have listening on the 28th Friday. We will finish the task two that we start on uh, Thursday tomorrow in the members chat. And then we will have a reading session for everyone. Uh, Saturday will be a speaking part two for members and a speaking part three for everyone. So those are the classes coming up uh, this week. Jat Sap Jat 7.5 overall, fantastic score. Thank you so much, by the way, for all those students who come back and share their scores in the chat. It's fantastic. I'm sure it motivates other students to learn and to know that it is possible to get those scores with practice and the right strategy. All right, students, let's get right into it. So uh, speaking in the IELTS exam, it's a 12 to 15 minute interview usually with a native English speaker, sometimes not. Sometimes it will be a non-native uh, user of English, but a very, very fluent English speaker, of course, like a band 8.5 or 9. So uh, be ready to hear different types of accents uh, from your interviewer, okay? Um, and um, during those uh, 15 minutes, you will be required to answer uh, questions in three parts. Part one, which we're doing today, uh, it's uh, some questions on a general topic, a little bit easier questions. And then you will have part two, which is a cue card. It's a short speech uh, on a few questions. It'll be two minutes uh, of response time. And then you will have speaking part three. Today we are focusing on speaking part one and let's just warm up our speaking brain and muscles in the English language. You walk in to the room with the examiner, stay cool, stay calm, stay confident, and then take your seat and the examiner will say, please take your seat, say thank you. Uh, and then the examiner will first ask you for your identification. So even before your name, the examiner will say, uh, may I see your identification, please? Be ready for this question. Uh, have different ways to answer, so you're natural. Um, what can you say for this? Okay, may I see your identification, please? What's a good way to answer this? Okay, keep it simple. Um, yes, please is a, it's okay, uh, Sharn, but, uh, most native speakers wouldn't say yes, please. They would say, yes, sure, here you are. Okay. Uh, Amrit, that's good. Certainly. Here it is. That's nice and polite. Uh, Roshni, that's very polite. Yes, ma'am. Here it is. If it's a woman, if it's a uh, man, then yes, sir, here you are. Okay. Uh, Tina, nice uh, full response. Yes, here you are. Please have a look or please take a look. Harsh Gala says, there you go. Um, there you go, Harsh Gala, is a little bit too colloquial. To my friend, it's okay, but to a stranger or a teacher or an interviewer, it's a little bit too relaxed. Okay. Uh, sure, here you are is relaxed, but it's a little bit more polite. Programmer 1203. So, um, Yes, uh, most certainly. Here it is. Please take a look. Or let's say please have a look. All right. So again, remember, repeat questions and answers. May I see your identification, please? Yes, most certainly. Here it is. Please have a look. All right, and then before they give your identification back, the next question will be, for sure, what is your full name? They're matching your identification uh, name with your uh, response, so what you actually say, okay? So what is your full name? Again, have a few different ways to answer this. Aidana Sadibek says, my full name is... SN Bekova, Aidana, please call me just Aidana. Aidana, that works nice. Okay, Begzad says, my given name is Begzad, my surname is Suyanov, please just call me Begzad, that works good. 
Hung says, my full name is Tasi Sheng Hung. Please call me Hung. Okay, Hung, that works good. All right. Ferdov says, my given name is Ferdovs and my family name is Nabiev. Uh, please call me uh, by my first name. Uh, not as my first name, Ferdovs. By my first name is better. Okay. All right. Yeah. So those are some good ways to respond. Again, students have different ways to answer this question. You need to sound natural. If you sound robotic, if you sound like you're memorizing answers, you might not get the best mark. Okay. Uh, Caddy, send me a question on that. It's a little bit off topic, but yes, you can pass the exam studying in one month, depending on how you study and your base level of English. Okay, let's get back to this questions here. So, uh, what is your first name? My given name is Franklin. And my family name is Smith, as you will also see in my passport. Please just call me by my nickname, Frank. Okay. All right. Now, again, as long as you're natural, smooth, and fluent, you can get these types of uh, longer responses in for this question. So repeat after me. What is your full name? My given name is Franklin and my family name is Smith as you will also see this in my passport. Please just call me by my nickname Frank. Okay. Again, uh, they will ask you what should I call you, especially if you have a difficult name. Uh, so make sure you tell them. Uh, try to preempt that question. So don't wait for them to ask you, what should I call you? But just say, if you have a nickname, just say, call me by my nickname, Frank. Okay. All right. Uh, so then uh, you will have a few more, one or two more kind of follow-up questions to this uh, to make you feel comfortable, hopefully help you relax, okay? These are uh, just some icebreaker questions. They're called icebreakers. So the examiner will say, all right, now for part one, I will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better. And then some questions on a general topic. What do you do at weekends? Now, British English, uh, they say weekends, uh, North American English, Canadian, U.S. Uh, we say on weekends, doesn't matter. It's the same. So what do you do at weekends? This is a general question, so use the present tense, okay? When you have general questions, always use present tense. Uh, Monica Lama says, uh, at the weekend, I like to hang with friends uh, because I really enjoy their company. Like last weekend, I went hiking with my best friend. We had a great time. Uh, that's really good, okay? I like how... You answered, explained, and gave an example, Monica. It sounds like you have some good teachers. You're paying attention to our lessons, so that's fantastic, Monica. It's a good answer. Uh, Ferdov says, uh, at weekends, I like to go for walks in the park with my sons, uh, take in the fresh air, and unwind from the stresses of everyday life. Uh, Ferdov's really nice natural language and expression uh, perfect length of answer. Very good. Okay. Very nice answers. Uh, I'm very happy that, uh, students are paying attention to previous lessons and practicing. It shows I can see it. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, Tina says, well, at weekends, I usually do chores and make a great meal to have with my family. And in the evening I go out and hang, uh, sometimes with, uh, my family or with friends. Yeah, that's great, Tina. Um, instead of the second part of that, Tina, I might just actually uh, give an example of a great meal that you made. Uh, it's interesting that you say you like to make a great meal. Um, so uh, maybe say uh, a meal that you made. So Tina, it could be better by saying something like, well, at weekends, I usually do chores and make a great meal to have with my family. Like last Saturday, uh, made a very delicious beef stroganoff uh, for my kids, okay? So that could be a little bit 
better, Tina. Whenever students, you say an idea that's a little bit unique, which is good because it's original and natural, like make a great meal on the weekend, give an example of that, okay? Like a spaghetti, a stroganoff, a pizza, or maybe something more complex like sushi, all right? So give some examples, all right? Give some examples. Those will help your marks. All right. Um, so here we go. Whenever I have the chance, I like to do some extreme sports on the weekend, like mountain bike or rock climb like last Saturday when I scaled a 100-foot rock face. All right, always like to teach you a little bit fresh new English whenever I can. Uh, students definitely do pay attention to learning uh, vocabulary. Pop quiz. How many words should you focus to learn and use each day before you sit the IELTS exam? This is a very good uh, point to take note of. How many, how many words? What's the average number of words that uh, you can effectively learn to understand and use? each and every day, every 24 hours, for about 30 to 60 days before the exam. Bagzad says three to four. Roshni says maybe around five. Mad Bat says, hey, how about five words? Roshni says five. Hunk says eh, up to seven. Um, yeah, anywhere from four, five, six, seven. Okay, roughly about six, seven words. That's realistic. If, if you have... Lots of time to study. You're a student. Uh, maybe you don't have a job. You can focus on studying only. Uh, six, seven words is realistic. If you have a family, kids, a lot of different um, responsibilities, then uh, four, five is more realistic. Okay, so keep that in mind. But definitely learn at least a few words each day. Uh, not just to understand, but to use as well. Here we go. Repeat after me. Okay, repeat after me. What do you do at weekends? Whenever I have the chance, I like to do some extreme sports on the weekend, like mountain bike or rock climb. Like last Saturday uh, when I scaled a 100-foot rock face. What type of sentence structure is this response using? Okay, what type of sentence structure? Ronak, this is a live class, my good man. Uh, if it's not clear on your end, it could be the stream. If everybody, anybody else is having difficulty seeing uh, the video, let me know. But it does look like the stream is in excellent condition on my end. So, Ronak, uh, you got to be a little bit patient with live streams. Um, so, Roshni says it's present. Ferdov says it's complex. Yeah, Ferdov's, you're right. This is a complex sentence. Absolutely. You have to use complex sentences. All right. Matiang, thank you for confirming that. Uh, what kind of complex sentence is it? Let's take it one step further. Let's see how well some of you know your grammar. So what kind of complex sentence? You're definitely right. It's complex sentence. In fact, it's two complex sentences. And they are both what kind of complex sentence? sentences. I'm using some quantitative information, Tina, that's right, with the 100-foot rock face. Very good. Yeah. Pawan, I'm super happy that uh, the videos are helping you. Uh, Pachu says time. Yeah, there's some time in there for sure. Uh, Gwenkai says scale means to climb. Yeah, very good. Nice for identifying that unique verb. Guangkai, uh, Ren. Sada Fad says, is this a conditional? Absolutely, Sada uh, Fad. Very good. Yeah. Whenever I have the chance, it's a condition. So in the situation, when I have the chance, I like to do some extreme sports on the weekend, like mountain bike or rock climb. So it's like saying if, if I have the chance, right? 
And then here, like last Saturday, when I scaled a 100-foot rock face, so that's right, I think it was Pachuca that said that's a time uh, conjunction there, um, also a, a condition. So it's time and condition and condition. So very good, yeah, complex sentence using mostly condition with a little bit of time, yeah. When you use these kinds of complex conditional sentences effectively, your band scores go up, 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 and up. Okay, so very good. All right. We'll skip the next one. Where do you go to relax? Uh, let's get into some uh, strategy here. Uh, let's uh, take a couple points on dangers for low scores, okay? Dangers for low scores. So uh, what are dangers that you have to pay attention to in the speaking interview which can result in low scores? So many students have good English, good communication, but they still don't get the score they need in the speaking. So they need a seven, and they keep getting sixes or 6.5. Or they need a 6.5, they keep getting 5.5. What are the dangers, the caveats that students often face, the mistakes that they commit in the speaking section? So Begzad says one of them is not reflecting the grammar of questions. Yeah, so the question is maybe a conditional and they don't reflect that. Uh, Ariane says fluency, but you know what, Ariane? Fluency is not actually a big one because we are as fluent as we are. Uh, what I mean by that is fluency is something that we usually don't make a mistake on because that's our actual level. Rather, um, we are not showing our fluency. Okay. Satisfying time says confidence. Yeah, absolutely. So lack of confidence or saying in another way is being shy. Okay. That's definitely a big one. Don't be shy during the uh, exam. Uh, that is one of the biggest dangers. Be confident. Okay. Uh, think about the, um, examiner as your grandfather or your grandmother. Be confident. There are lots of students uh, who are taking the exam. The examiner doesn't really care about you too much. They are not going to feel insulted, okay, with your language. So be confident, be strong, believe in yourself, okay? So lack of confidence, definitely. Uh, Exod said a good one, said not reflecting grammar of questions. Absolutely. So if the examiner uses a conditional question, use a conditional answer. If they use present perfect question, have you ever seen an elephant? Use a present perfect answer. Yes, I have. I have seen an elephant when I visited Thailand, okay? Uh, Joshua says they're not being specific. Yeah, Joshua, you're right, okay? Um, one of the big ones, students, and I imagine some of you probably said this, I just can't read every single response, although I try. Um, a really big one is not answering in complete sentences. Okay, so... Here it's a little bit tricky, students. The IELTS exam is not the same as real life. Students think, oh, it's like a real life chit chat, but it's not. You have to answer in full, complete sentences. Always answer, explain, example, use the question, okay? And Banaz Zangana, you're right. That's the next one that I want to put up, is talking off topic. That's the other big danger. These are probably the four biggest that we've just listed here. There are lots, but these are the four biggest. So, all right. All right, number four, let's talk about that one a little bit before we go into more part one questions. So, 
you have to answer in full sentences, but you have to just give the answer and then wait for the next question. Don't speak too much. Don't keep talking until the examiner interrupts you or stops you. That's not a good idea, okay? Um, sometimes students just keep talking and talking and talking and they're not answering the question. They're going off topic and they start losing marks. Why? Because the uh, examiner is not sure if maybe the student has misunderstood the question and they're just trying to say any idea that comes to mind hoping to answer the question, okay? So don't go off topic. Answer, explain, example. And that also applies to memorized phrases. Like, um, there are some good phrases to use in the speaking. Like, that's an interesting question. Please give me a moment to think. You can use that once or twice in the whole speaking interview. But don't use it six, seven, eight times because then it's awkward. It's not natural, okay? You have to switch up your phrases. Now, some phrases that students have learned online and in some uh, programs have become too popular and they are just strange and they make you sound very unnatural. Like, thank you for asking me this interesting question. Please allow me a moment to respond. Okay, don't thank the examiner for asking you a question. That's their job. They're there to ask you questions. You don't need to thank them for that. That's just awkward, okay? It's not polite. It's just awkward. So don't do that, okay? Don't use too many memorized phrases, okay? Another common memorized phrase that I hear from students is, well, there are several reasons why people like to play sports. First of all, all right, don't do that. Naturally, people do not speak like that, okay? We don't say there are several reasons why people, first of all. We don't do that, okay? So careful with those memorized phrases. All right. So again, remember, dangers for getting low scores. Number one, definitely, being too shy, being quiet. The examiner can't hear you. They can't give you a mark. If you speak in short sentences or two-word answers, they cannot give you a good mark, even if you have good English. Okay? You have to show the grammar of questions. Different questions are designed to elicit different grammar. Elicit means to show or to pull out different grammar. Okay? Another big one, not answering complete sentences. And then the opposite kind of of that is speaking too much. Okay. Mad bat. Yeah. Eye contact is good. It helps speaking. It helps uh, communication. All right. Okay. Students, let's get into it a little bit more. Now, the examiner asked you a few icebreaker questions. Keep these points in mind that we talked about. And then the examiner will say, let's talk about sports. Okay. Let's talk about sports. As soon as you hear the, uh, word sports, sports as the topic, immediately some very important uh, vocabulary should start to pop into mind. When you're at home, practice this. So when you hear the topic, practice thinking of key words that are connected to sports. What are some key words connected to sports? Let's talk about sports. What are key words connected to sports? Athlete, Northwest Gaming, very good. Uh, I done, audience, for Dobbs, competition, Preeti, teamwork, uh, physical strength, Preeti, very good. Okay, those are all excellent. Yeah, excellent. So football, working out, competition, those are all really, really good. Yeah, so uh, I'll write those up in just a moment.
Uh, esports, sure, why not? Okay, that works. All right, yeah, so when you hear the topic, you should immediately think about these words, especially words like athlete, competition, okay? So some of those synonyms that are really, really useful for um, the word sports. So athlete, team, competition, tournament, okay? All of those are good words to think about. They should just kind of pop into your mind. All right, so here's the first question. Uh, what is your favorite sport? So what is your favorite sport? Sana Soyel says burning calories. That's good too. Um, it's getting a little bit specific, Sana. All right, so first question. Okay, what is your favorite sport? Uh, the what is your favorite, it's very common in part one. What is your favorite fruit? What is your favorite sport? What is your favorite TV show? Uh, have different ways to answer what is your favorite, okay? So have a few different ways to answer that question. I absolutely adore my number one, my first choice, okay, when it comes to sports. So there are several different ways. You can always paraphrase, all right? Always paraphrase, practice paraphrasing what is your favorite. Uh, Sundhar says, my favorite sport is cricket. Okay, uh, Sundhar, you should always explain why, because I've been playing it since I was a child, and uh, I'm quite good at it. Okay, Sundhar, so always give me a little bit more than just my favorite sport is cricket. That's a little bit too simple. Uh, Kyber says, well, my favorite sport is cricket. Um, it has a set of rules, uh, and you can do well by, okay, Kyber, uh, you're making a few mistakes there. Don't use the word your in your response. Okay. Uh, talk about yourself, not about the examiner in this case, and don't go off topic. So here you should say my favorite sport is because, and I play it every Saturday. All right, so stay on topic. Again, remember those dangers, students. Don't go off topic, all right? I'm just asking you what is your favorite sport. I'm not asking how to play it, okay? That would be a different question. How do you play it, all right? Uh, 3D Pictures says... Uh, the type of sport of all time is definitely table tennis. I do this sports once in a fortnight. Uh, 3D pictures, that's a little bit awkward, I'll be honest with you. It's not quite natural. Um, you need to say, for instance, 3D pictures, a better way to say that would be my favorite sport of all time is table tennis. I play it at least once every few nights. Okay in the evening with some friends. So that would be a better way. So my favorite sport of all time is table tennis. I love its fast pace and I play it at least once every few days at a local Recreation Center. Okay, so that would be a good answer. Uh, repeat after me. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport of all time is table tennis. I love its fast pace, and I play it at least once every few days at a local recreation center. Notice how it's fairly short. I give my answer, I give the reason, and then I give an example of how often I play it. 
so that the person knows that it's my favorite sport, something I do regularly. Okay. All right. Uh, Amarwadi says, my first choice is swimming. Uh, I find it relaxing and an excellent workout. Yeah, sure. I'll put up uh, as an alternate answer for that one, Amar. Yeah, why not? So my first choice when it comes to athletics is swimming since I find it very relaxing and it is a full body workout. Okay, so that would be a nice alternate. Again, pay attention, students, to new vocabulary, uh, a different way to say my favorite. My first choice when it comes to athletics. Athletics is another way to say sports. Is swimming, since I find it very relaxing and it is a full body workout. Uh, what kind of a complex sentence is since? What kind of a complex sentence is since? It is a drum roll. Hopefully a couple of you are typing this in right now. It is a cause and effect. Okay, cause and effect. So you should use uh uh, sorry, it, it, since uh, I find it very relaxing, yeah, it's a cause and effect, yeah, cause and effect. It's not time, yeah, it's because, it's cause and effect, okay? It's a subordinating conjunction, put you, and it's a complex sentence, not, not a compound, okay? All right, here is the next question. How often do you play sports? All right, again, very common, uh, asking for adverbs of frequency, okay? How often do you play sports? Okay, answer that question for me in a full sentence. How often do you play sports? Okay, Osmar Naur says, well, for me, it is a daily activity. Uh, why, Osmar Naur? Answer that question, okay? Always try to give a reason. So, well, for me, it is a daily activity because I find sports not only enjoyable, but an excellent way to stay fit, all right? Sounds logical. Sounds like your examiners should know that. They probably do. But you need to give that kind of information to get those higher band scores, all right, uh, Sada Fod says, I play sports three times a week and I am a member of a local sports club. Uh, Sada Fod, very good, okay, nice quantitative language in there. A little bit more detail by explaining th that you're a member at a local club. Uh, what kind of sports do you play? Okay, so answer that as well. All right. Um, for Dobbs says two times a week, I go to the swimming pool, mostly on the weekends with my sons. Very nice for Dobbs. Nice quantitative language. You give me a specific time. Excellent. Begzad says, I usually try to participate in sports three times each week as this is the best way for keeping in shape and being active. Beautiful natural quantitative language with excellent use of uh, adverb of frequency bags odd. That is the right way to do it. Um, here is uh, an answer. Okay. I frequently play sports at least three times a week as I had just mentioned in regards to table tennis, but often 
even more frequently or even more so since I like to swim at the local pool on weekends. All right. So again, a really nice strategy, students, to improve your speaking band score is to make connections among your answers, all right? So remember our previous one about what is your favorite sport? And I said my favorite sport of all time is table tennis. I love its fast pace, and I play it at least once every few days at uh, the local rest, uh, recreation center. Well, I can refer to that because I said I play it three times a week. So how often do you play sports? I frequently play sports. It's my adverb of uh, frequency. I frequently play sports at least three times a week, as I had just mentioned in regards to table tennis. Notice past perfect. I had just mentioned in regards to table tennis, but often even more so since I like to swim at the local pool on weekends, okay? So I'm making a connection here to my previous answer, which is improving my cohesion and my coherence. Again, students, remember, repeat after me. So when you hear me say these questions and answers, make sure to repeat, okay? All right. Uh, next question. So good answers. Students, by the way, I'm sorry I can't read everybody's responses. I wish I could. Uh, there are often 30, 40 chats coming up at once. I try to catch different students each time. Members are easy to catch because their names are coming up in green, of course. All right. Uh, but keep chatting, okay? Keep chatting. Keep practicing. Just because I don't catch your comment, don't give up, okay? Do your best. Keep going, all right? Here we go. Uh, what are sports you like to watch on TV? All right. What are sports you like to watch on TV? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that question. Okay. Uh, Bagzad says, hmm, that's an interesting question. Well, I really love watching basketball and ping pong. As I had previously said, that watching them helps me learn new tricks and methods. Yeah, ping pong, uh, Begzod, as you've clearly indicated, is another way to say table tennis. Very good, ping pong. Um, Santa says, I like to watch cricket on TV uh, sin ever since I've been a child. I used to enjoy watching it with my grandfather. Nowadays, I watch the World Cup on TV approximately three hours. All right, a little bit awkward there. You're kind of jumping ideas with that one. Careful uh, to stay clear and coherent, Sana. Uh, choose one and stick with it. So Sana, if these days you like watching um, football, especially World Cup, just stay with that one. Okay, Just say, these days I'm really enjoying the World Cup games uh, for soccer on TV. Uh, I watch at least two to three hours each day. Okay, so just say that, Sana. Don't, don't jump around. Don't give me multiple answers. Stay with one. Give me details. It's better. All right. Okay. Good luck on your exam tomorrow, Kyber. Ferdov says, not, al not also do I love to watch soccer on TV. Okay, Ferdov, not only. Not only do I love to watch soccer on TV, but I also... Uh, love playing football as last Saturday I watched the game Manchester United versus Liverpool with my family. It was super exciting. All right, for Dobbs. Good. Malachi Canoba says, I play football every evening after work and in the mornings during weekends. It helps to keep my body in good physical conditions. Malachi, I think you're answering a previous question there, which is okay. All right. 
Mathyang Mashar says, I enjoy watching football quite frequently because it inspires me, especially when I uh, see the upcoming stars. And I also find it a lot of fun. Very good. Okay, that's a nice one. So it's inspiring. All right. So here we go. Um, I truly enjoy watching football on the tube as it is not only exciting. I like how some students use the uh, correlative conjunction not only but also. I truly enjoy watching football on the tube as it is not only exciting but also a great way to unwind from the stresses of the workday. Just yesterday, I saw a great game with Manchester United versus Liverpool. All right, so again, answer, explain, example, and use subordinating, coordinating, and correlative conjunctions to boost your band scores. So here we go. I truly enjoy watching football on the tube as it is not only exciting, but also a great way to unwind from the stresses of the workday. Just yesterday, I saw a great game with Manchester United versus Liverpool. It's fantastic, okay? That's the kind of answer that will get you that high band score. The not only, but also correlative conjunction, use them. All right, next question, students. How have sports changed in the past three decades? So how have sports changed in the past three three decades, getting into a little bit more challenging questions using a little bit higher level grammar. This is a present perfect have changed. Again, remember the dangers we talked about at the beginning, not reflecting grammar. So if you just say sports changed a lot, it's not enough. You need to use present perfect. Okay. Begzod says, well, there have been considerable changes in sports with the advancements in technology like cameras. As three de decades prior, most players cheated during the uh, game. Uh, however, these days, it is quite impossible to do so. Begzod, that's a brilliant answer. Really good visualization. Not only is it good English, but it's very smart as well. That's how you get a band nine, Begzod. Good for you. All right, very good. Absolutely. The rules and enforcing the rules have become a lot more effective with advancements in technology. Definitely. Absolutely. Brilliant. Alvira Asanova says, well, in the last 30 years, some kinds of sports like ice skating became more popular and worldwide and techniques have become more complex. Alvira, Beautiful. I love how you're using the present perfect. Have become more complex, have become more popular. Elvira, that's how you get those high band scores. Also, Elvira, absolutely I noticed that you paraphrased three decades to 30 years. Your examiner will notice that also, and they will give you a better band score. Okay. Joshua Pasagoy says not only technology. Uh, has uh, been improved with innovation, uh, which has affected sports. Uh, for example, table tennis. In recent years, they have been using more sandpaper on their rackets, but now they're using rubber instead to get more accurate and faster shots. Okay, Joshua, good. It's a good effort. Just be careful with your word choice and grammar structure so that it's clear. I had to do a little bit of real-time correction there, okay? Kiet Tran says, 
In the past 30 years, there have been little changes in terms of rules, but with the advancements of technology, such as VAR and goal line technology, sports seem to be more fair. Uh, yeah, and Kiet uh, uh, Tran, I would probably use a present perfect at the end there. So I would say uh, sports have become more fair, something like that. Okay, try to get that present perfect really in there. All right. Um, I noticed that you got it in at the beginning, but if you can get it in a second time, it's even better. All right. And technology is definitely a good go to whenever we're talking about changes over the decades so although the rules of most sports haven't changed much over the past 30 years technology which is used to assess and enforce rules have come a long way. Therefore, sports seem to be more fair, like in tennis, knowing when the ball is in or out of the court. All right. So uh, using some of your ideas, students, this is my response here. A uh, little bit of opposition complex sentence. Although, again, repeat, repeat after me. How have sports changed in the past three decades? Although the rules of most sports haven't changed much over the past 30 years, technology, which is used to assess and enforce rules, notice the uh, adjective clause, which is used to assess and enforce rules, have come a long way, okay? That is a nice expression, which means have advanced, okay? So have come a long way. Therefore, sports seem to be more fair-like in tennis, knowing when the ball is in or out of the court. All right, students, couple more questions here. How has technology changed sports entertainment? Lo and behold, another question that you can connect to the previous. And here's another one. If you could try any sport, what would it be and why? I will leave you these last two questions for homework. You can answer them on your phone, record them, send them to me by email, and I will tell you roughly your band score level for those two questions, okay? Again, my email is Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Send those answers as an MP3 recording to me. Again, those questions are, how has technology changed sports entertainment? If you could try any sports, what would it be and why? Okay, so answer those questions. Send them to me. I will give you a score estimate based on those two answers. For lots more help with the IELTS exam, lots of strategies, lots of full video lessons with no ads in high definition, high quality, as well as a fully interactive course, six original practice tests with full audio. Everybody who uses our courses seems to love them. Uh, join us for academic at aehelp.com, for general at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. And right now, you can use this code LIVE20 to get a 20% discount. It's already a great price, 20% off. It's even a better price. Spend a little money to save a lot. Use the right tools for the job. We got the right tools for your high band scores for the IELTS exam. Thank you so much, students, for watching today. Again, remember, tomorrow, more classes. 
for members and everyone else. If I missed some of your comments, don't worry about it. It's nothing personal. I wish I could answer all of your questions and get to all of your comments. I promise I will do my best to get you next time if I missed you this time. Remember, you're all brilliant, beautiful people. Study hard, study lots. You will reach your goals. Much love to all of you. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.